Hello everyone, welcome to the Oyster Mushroom Expert Channel. Today I'll be talking about the dangers of oyster mushroom spores, the symptoms caused by inhaling them, whether mushroom spores can grow in your lungs, and which respirator is best for protection against spores. Oyster mushroom spores are problematic in several ways. First, they are allergens. Second, if you see spores in the growing chamber, it means you've already lost part of your harvest. First, let's talk about harvest loss. This photo clearly shows that the mushrooms are fully mature. The caps have become as thin as a sheet of paper and have curled upwards, exposing the gills. This curling helps the spores spread as far as possible. However, sometimes the mushrooms don't curl their caps, but they still release spores effectively. When the mushrooms are overripe, the spore cloud in the growing chamber looks like a dense fog. If you shine a flashlight, you will clearly see the cloud and individual spores. Even if there's no visible spore fog, you may sometimes notice a pale gray dust on the shelves or other surfaces. These are also spores. Sometimes you may notice thin white threads hanging from the edges of caps or gills, like in this photo. These are clusters of spores that have clumped together or fine aerial mycelium hyphae covered with spores. The growth of aerial mycelium indicates that the grow room has high temperature and below optimal humidity. These climate issues become especially critical when combined with poor air circulation. This combination leads to the formation of white hanging threads of spores instead of spores dispersing through the room. Poor air circulation can result from two main causes. Either the airflow speed is too low or the air currents bypass the clusters of mushrooms. I've been asked several times if such threads or collected spores can be used to propagate mycelium on a petri dish and then produce grain spawn. The answer is no. These spores and threads are unsuitable for propagation because, along with oyster mushroom spores, they contain dust, mold spores, and airborne bacteria. Spores are very sticky because in nature it's crucial for them to adhere firmly to tree bark. In a growing chamber, they stick to everything they can reach, including shelves, fan blades, and ducting. This slows down the fans, reducing the airflow speed. Inside the air conditioner or heat exchanger, the spores accumulate and clog the gaps between the fins, further decreasing the airflow. All the filters will also become clogged and contaminated. This is a homemade synthetic filter in the photo. It started out white and now it looks like this. Additionally, mushrooms that are already mature and releasing spores become lighter in weight. You might think it's too early to harvest today and plan to do it tomorrow morning, but by then the mushrooms will have grown much larger and become lighter. For example, these mushrooms in the photo are ready for harvesting. In three to four hours, the caps will open and the spores will start flying. Notice how the cap edges are still curled downward and the caps themselves are firm with a beautiful color. Compare this with the next cluster. Here, the caps are paper thin, the edges have curled upward, and the color is dull. These mushrooms are very light, which means you have lost sellable weight from this harvest. Now let's talk about the health hazards of the spores. Mushroom spores can cause allergies. I've seen people enter a growing chamber and immediately develop an allergic reaction. Their faces turns red, and their temperature rises. Others start coughing, but their face doesn't flush and their temperature doesn't rise. Over time, this cough can become so severe that those affected feel like they need to expel something but can't. Can spores grow in your lungs? I've heard stories claiming that spores hook onto the insides of the lungs and grow there, but this isn't true. What really happens is that spores enter the windpipe and lungs and trigger mucus production. The mucus traps dust particles, including spores, and works to expel them through coughing. 
If there are lots of spores, the mucus can accumulate, causing a strong urge to cough. It's possible that if you're in a chamber with high concentration of spores for a long time, some spores might settle in your lungs. They could adhere to the inside, but the mucus will attempt to expel them, causing severe coughing. Since oyster mushrooms are wood decaying fungi, the internal tissues of the lungs do not provide the nutrients necessary for their growth. Additionally, the human body temperature is too high and the humidity in the respiratory tract is insufficient for spore germination. However, this does not mean that spores are not harmful to your health. This is why you should never let mushrooms fully mature. Harvest them earlier to prevent spores from filling the room. And to avoid coughing, always harvest mushrooms while wearing a respirator. When harvesting oyster mushrooms, use respirators with a P3 rating. In the U.S., these are labeled as P100. These respirators are marked with red indicators, such as text written in red or red stripes on the filters. Replace the filters as often as specified in the instructions. Even if you're healthy with a strong immune system, you still need to use a respirator. If you're prone to allergies, you might not be able to grow oyster mushrooms or work on a mushroom farm. Taking allergy medications while continuing to work isn't a solution. Eventually, the medications will stop being effective. You need to treat your allergies. Start by doing breathing exercises. They're very simple and won't take much of your time. These exercises are described on my website and I'll include the link in the first comment. You also need to strengthen your immune system. Start by eating right to ensure your liver can handle the immune load. Any allergic reaction is a strong immune response to a foreign protein and oyster mushroom spores are rich in protein. Everything in the body is interconnected. It is also recommended that you find a good doctor to manage your allergies early on. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. We post new videos regularly so you can learn much more about growing from your oyster mushroom expert.